Today is Tuesday in the third week of Advent and the memorial of St. John of the Cross. In the third week of Advent, we continue our spiritual preparation for the Christmas holiday. Christmas is a season of hope, and today's memorial and readings offer us a meditation on second chances. Regardless of what we have done in the past, we can change and begin anew, turn to God, and listen carefully to God's calling and desires for us. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus describes two men who are given a command by their Father. The one who does the Father's will does so only after first refusing. The other affirms he will act, but fails to do so. Jesus reminds us that even if we refuse to act at first, or fail to act, we can always try again. An argument is not the end of a relationship. A failure to love doesn't mean we cannot be more loving. This can be a liberating sentiment as the year draws to a close, our time for planning New Year's resolutions. However, rather than making a list of resolutions or comforting myself in the notion that I can do better, I want to probe a deeper question. Why have I failed to act? Why, like the man in the gospel story, have I refused to go into the vineyards of my own life? Knowing myself, I know it is not always easy to change one's mind. If God is calling me to work in a vineyard that is outside of my comfort zone, I may have many reasons to refuse. For me, those vineyards could be a specific job or career, my relationship to family, friends, work colleagues, or a deep nagging sense of calling, a vocation that cannot be ignored. Concerning this kind of discernment, I can think of two obstacles, two reasons that I, like the men in the gospel, may refuse to do the will of the Father. It's too difficult, and I'm not worthy. First, I know that I have often refused to respond to certain circumstances because the challenge seems insurmountable. I know that many of us in the Holy Trinity community are committed to doing good in society through the institutions of the church or the state. Both our Catholic Church and our American government have suffered blows to their credibility in recent years. Scandals have plagued both institutions and both have lost the faith of the public, especially the younger millennial and Gen Z adults. Our first reading says, Woe to the city rebellious and polluted. She hears no voice, accepts no correction. In the Lord she has not trusted. Could these lines describe our own city, our state, or our church? Have our leaders been like those who accept no correction? Have any of us? Or do we stand self-righteous, knowing better, in judgment of others? Of this city, the prophet says, For then I will change and purify the lips of the people. On that day, you need not be ashamed of your deeds, your rebellious actions against me, for then will I remove from your midst the proud. This reference to shame that God will wipe away leads me to my second point. The second reason I may refuse the Father's command is that I feel I'm not worthy to go into the vineyard. How many good people refuse to run for political office, enter church ministry, or pursue leadership in their field because they think they are not worthy. I think this is especially true for those of us who have felt left out, anyone who experiences minority stress in their community or workplace. Psychologists identify imposter syndrome as an experience of doubting one's competence or accomplishments, the fear of being revealed as a fraud. I think the core idea here is shame. Being ashamed of who we are or simply doubting our intrinsic worth, is completely contrary to our faith, since we believe God 
created us. Nonetheless, Catholic guilt, perhaps occasional sincere remorse for our sins and shortcomings, has a pernicious way of slowly evolving into deep shame. As I reflect on shame and the way shame has been an obstacle in my own spiritual life, I'm comforted by today's psalm. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Rather than feeling alienated from God, it is precisely in the darkness of our shame, fear, and self-doubt that God is close to us. Reflecting on St. John of the Cross, whose memorial we celebrate today, provided me with some more perspective on shame and spiritual desolation. In an article in America Magazine, Lawrence Cunningham writes, John's basic roadmap is the passage through the night of senses into the night of faith and to that dawn whose light comes after the deepest darkness of night. John's night is always to be understood in dialectical relationship to a deep mystery of God. God is todo e nada, everything and nothing. And we are now entering the shortest and darkest and coldest days of the year. The literal darkness of these shortest days of the year shroud us in the nothing. The Welsh poet Dylan Thomas had thoughts on the darkness. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. However, in contrast to Thomas, I'd like to suggest we take the approach of John of the Cross. God is both todo e nada, everything and nothing. Let's meditate on the darkness, sit in the darkness, until we hear the words of Isaiah proclaimed at Christmas Midnight Mass. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. And these words from the prologue of John's Gospel proclaimed on Christmas Day, what came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Rather than dwelling on our shame or in our desolation, we can sit in the darkness by knowing that darkness and light are all God. We are on a spiritual and psychological path toward the light. We can pray to God to reveal spiritual light and consolation to us in the coming weeks as we prepare for Christmas. Then, even if the task is difficult or we don't feel worthy, even if we refuse God at first or refuse the call many times, it is never too late for us to say yes and choose to go into the vineyards of our lives. Let me end with this quote by Father Henry Nowen. God wants to dwell in our emptiness. But as long as we are afraid of God and God's actions in our lives, it is unlikely that we will offer our emptiness to God. Let's pray that we can let go of our fear of God and embrace God as the source of all love.